What's up, everybody? I'm going to be having a, an online chat with a mate of mine, Peter John Huyeman. Um I'm going to wait for him to come on and then I'll add him to this video. And then we'll just have a short, maybe 30 minute conversation. In the meantime, while I wait for him, I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you're being productive. Um, obviously, we've been dealing with in the news the tragedies that are that have befallen the people of Wazulu, uh, particularly around the Durban area, which have been flooded very, very badly. There were heavy rains over the last weekend, and I think it's been raining um, earlier this week as well. It looks like there might be more rain in this coming weekend, and people have lost homes, people have lost lives. I think when I looked at the news. Uh, Last night, they were saying something like 309 people have died, sadly. Um, so yeah, um, condolences and sympathies to anyone who's lost loved ones in KZN from the floods. Um, and I feel sorry for people that have lost their homes, that have lost some of their assets. People have probably lost documents that they're going to have to go and queue for with our useless government departments. And yeah, man, it's, it's a mess. You know, I guess shout out to Cyril Ramaphosa. You know, we can't only speak about him when he's doing bad things. Shout out to Cyril for going to show face in KZN and, and going to share his sympathies and condolences and just going to be on the ground to see what's happening there with the people. Um, and then shout out to Gift of the Givers as well. You know, one of our most important NPOs, non-profit organizations in this country, which does an insane amount of charity work. If you go to their website, Gift of the Givers, you'll see the work they do. It's a Muslim organization. It's funded a lot by Muslims locally and across the world. But the work they've done in this country, the work they've done on this continent, and even work they've done overseas is nothing short of exemplary. And it's a reminder that there are good people out there. There are great leaders out there. And to everyone who donates to Gift of the Givers, to everyone who's volunteered to work on with Gift of the Givers, um, thank you very much for the work that you do. Still waiting for Peter John to come on and then I'll add him to this video. So yeah. Um, I'd also just, I guess I'd like to take this moment for anyone who maybe hasn't been watching any of my other videos to just give a big thank you to everyone who's been supporting the work I've been doing this year. Um, everyone who's been watching my videos on YouTube in particular, God Penwell being my channel, um, subscribed, comments, watches and shares, People that have been watching my TikTok videos at God Penwell. People that were watching my Facebook videos. Facebook has been my biggest platform. I think I'm on 108,000 followers now. Pen you while the black pen. You know, and it's so cool that um, people are starting to recognize me in the streets. You know, it's very humbling. But at the same time, it reminds me that I have a responsibility. That since people have got their eyes on me, since people are giving me their ear, it's up to me to educate as much as possible, especially the stuff that you guys are not getting in schools. So yeah, Peter John is here. So let me see if I can add him to the chat. Technology, don't fail me. PJ. Hi, Pinwell. My brother, how are you? I'm good, thanks to you, my brother. I'm right, thank you. I'd just like to say before we start, um, please just assume that this is a conversation between you and I. Please don't sure. worry about the comments and other people that are watching. Uh, sure. maybe, we'll, maybe we'll read some of the comments uh, at the end, but for all intents and purposes, this is between me and you. So please be comfortable, please feel free. Um, sure. But with that being said, uh, please feel free to introduce yourself. We've been chatting a lot via text, via voice notes, and we've never officially met, but you feel like yeah. one of my closest brothers. Um, sure. So I think this was long overdue, and I think even a meetup is probably long overdue. But thank you very much for joining me, brother. How are you? No, uh, thank you, Penwell, uh, for this opportunity as well. Uh, you're correct. I think I've been following you for about five years, more or less. <laughs> yeah, um, I think since about 2017. So... Just to everyone who doesn't know me, uh, I'm Peter John. Uh, my surname's Huyaman. I'm all the way from Kimberley in the Northern Cape. Uh, I am currently based in uh, Johannesburg. I myself am an entrepreneur. I've got two businesses that I'm currently running. You're based in Johannesburg? Uh, yeah, I moved up here now. <laughs> when did you move up? 
Is that my network? Yeah. Jeez, my apologies. When did you move up? Um, about midway through 2021. Jeez, I wasn't aware of this. That fucking sucks. Yeah. My apologies. Please carry on. <laughs> so you've moved to Joburg. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah. So uh, primarily, as you know, um, I'm I'm involved in the the diamond industry from a beneficiation side. Uh, that's that's the cutting and polishing side of things. Um, and then I started this business with my wife called Kinelo Electations. It's just gone crazy uh, since November last year. We actually make uh, lactation cookies. Uh, so these contain ingredients, natural ingredients called galactagogues that aid and stimulate uh, breast milk production for those ladies that are breastfeeding and, you know, have, have a drop in their the supply of, of breast milk. So it's it, it kept me busy even this morning. I was... I was baking because my wife's in corporate, so I have to do some of the baking. I I do the deliveries. I do everything for now until, of course, um, we we are looking to employ employ people eventually, you know. Uh, but we're just taking things one step at a time, kicking our compliance boxes off, and then we we really gunning to to go big, you know, go big or go home, basically. Yes. Just yeah. to take a step back, so you're in Diamonds, you're from Kimberley. Kimberley is obviously yeah. the home of Diamonds. Uh, yeah. How did you get into Diamonds? And did you start here in Joburg or did you actually start back home? Uh, so I started back home. I To take it a little further back, uh, so I finished school in 2013. And uh, 2014, I, the, I, I took a year off essentially, but it wasn't really me just lazing around. Um, I did some real deep digging and soul searching. Um, I did a little bit of work for super sport, um, but that was, you know, uh, for, for a very short period. Um, and then 2015, I moved to Cape town, uh, started studying, uh, become law. And then that spirit, that, that thing you call a mental illness caught hold of me where you are the masses and, um, I, I really went deep into black consciousness, pan-Africanism, um, and yeah, that, that, that really changed my life, you know, permanently. And I think I sort of checked out of that in 2017 when I moved back to Kimberley. So I had to find my, I had to now find what I was going to do productively so, um, and, and how was I going to utilize my strengths, my networks, um, and all that I had learned, and I believe that was me becoming a man uh, going to Cape Town. That was my initiation, um, you know. And then I, I looked around, I did a bit of searching, and one of my uncles approached me and he said, look, um, I want you to, to play a role in my company. Um, and he's, he's on the diamond side, so he mines, right? But... Um, not the greatest of characters, but in any case, I did a bit of, <laughs> he said, I should first go get the skills. And I said, but where do I go? I don't even know where you obtain these skills. And I went to go and study at the Kimberley Diamond and Jewelry Incubator. Uh, oh no, Kimberley, Kimberley International Diamond and Jewelry Academy. That was 2018. And then 2019, I did a course through the GIA the Gemological Institute of America. That one was for free, um, but it's, it's a well sought after course and they're the foremost, you know, grading institute. And then from there on in, I was just like, dude, you've got this um, entrepreneurial thing about you. You can stick through tough times. You, um, you've, you've got what it takes, you know, so just push through and, and try and make this work. So when, when I actually did a bit of digging in my family history, my mother's grandfather, my great grandfather, uh, actually used to mine, uh, but but he did really well for himself just outside of Kimberley. And this is during, you know, apartheid days. Um, it's a place called Gonggong. It's got a waterfall. It's, it's a diamond rich area. And I then said, okay, look, maybe this is a, a destiny calling or whatever the case may be. <laughs> you know, I followed suit, but unfortunately with that, there were family that inherited a lot of his machines and a lot of the wealth. So it did not filter down and it was never well maintained. So some of the mm-hmm. stuff were just sold or paid off for cash. And mm-hmm. now, really, and, and this is something you say, I had to now start from the zero or from the negatives. Um, you know, whereas I could have used 
his legacy and built on what could have been preserved from him to then further my career in the industry. Um, just a little bit of a brief uh, addition to that. Um, I've been following in Tlantla Lux recently a lot. I'm sure many of us have. And then I saw another common thread and I was quite intrigued by the story of his father. Um, so my dad is a similar sort of township character to Nchantla Lakta's father. Uh, my, yeah, my dad was one of those topies who started smuggling diamonds in apartheid. Um, <laughs> as far as I know, he did fund, um, I think going into democracy, did fund uh, the ANC in the Northern Cape, um, got them cars, got them this, got them that, and obviously feels a bit left behind now. But uh, man, he, he, he was the guy with his imported cars, the clothes, the money. And obviously I've got probably about over 10 siblings or so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's that, you know, diamonds then form part of my, my history, both paternally and maternally, but I was never really ex- Yes. Thank you very much for that, PJ. Um, I'm going to try not to speak much, but uh, <laughs> this link we have with our fathers seems to be deeper than I think I, I understood for a really long time. Because it seems every time I'm meeting, especially young leaders, there seems yes. to be a link with their fathers, especially if their fathers were absent or detached, where it's almost like the spirit of your father starts coming in very strongly <laughs> as you get older. Um, but thank you for that history. Sure. Um, I, I want to talk about your black consciousness phase and then yeah. I want to speak about the business that you, you and your wife uh, have started. But I, I want to conclude properly on this diamond aspect. Sure. Um, we know the Oppenheimers, Cecil John Rhodes, I think Cecil John Rhodes, those guys got wealthy from diamonds. Yeah. So... Yeah. Do you have wishes of becoming super wealthy in diamonds? Is that partly why you're here? How big is the industry? Is it is it is it up for grabs? Is it very closed? Like, and how big do you want to get? You know, and are you are you making moves or is it really really tough? Um. So the industry is 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 a very small, select little village of people. Um. It it is obviously dominated by by Jewish people. Um, both locally in South Africa and abroad in America, Israel, and all those places. Um, Indians are massive role players as well. They've come up very strong because their labor is far more cheaper than ours. So they've got mm -hmm. these seasonal workers. And those seasonal workers, when they out, because when the monsoon season hits, they then have to be indoors. So then they've got like 300, 400, 500,000 cutters and polish polishers. Uh, to pick and choose from. And even though they're using archaic methods to cut and polish, um, it's dirt cheap and they can cut the smallest diamonds and they can cut fancy diamonds and, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, it's, it, you obviously will always have the racist element in there. You know, uh, mm -hmm. why do you think you're doing this is our space? Um, you know, go and just be a worker in my factory or whatever, that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. Firstly, I'm, I'm grateful to the black people in the industry who've, who've stood up and who've occupied space, who've, 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 who've played meaningful roles um, in the diamond industry because it has made it slightly easier for us to get in. It is extremely tough in the sense that um, with other businesses uh, or some of them, you can sort of start with what you have and where you are. And you can barter a lot, you know, in, in, in that sense. But here, you, th there's high upfront, you know, uh, uh, costs, capital costs. So you need your cutting and polishing benches. And these things actually are not only needed to get the job done, but for compliance as well, for you to be issued a license. So I went through the Kimberley Diamond Jewelry Incubator, which is a government initiative and Shout out to them. They, they did the idea, the concept is really brilliant because 
I then didn't have to worry about a building. I didn't have to worry about security. Uh, the cutting and polishing benches were all there. I just had to get other smaller pieces of equipment which weren't that expensive. But that, mm. and then also there's the lease. You need to sign a five-year lease to get your license with the, the said landlord. So that really helped me then, you know, get up on my feet. But what you learn in the class is not enough. Um, mm. You need to learn. You need to go out. You need to go to diggers. You need to network. You need to make yourself known. You're going to have to risk your life one way or the other. Um, and I, I, I kind of sometimes get a thrill out of that. And it comes from activism, you know, driving in Mitchell's Plain at 12 o'clock at night and uh, coming out of Kailiche at 2 a.m. in the morning, going into Google. To, I don't know why, but it just gave me a sense of uh, being alive. And I think the the silent role I played, because you mentioned something in one of your videos the other day, I can be a really good leader, but I can also be a very good follower. And I know when it's my time to shine and I know it's when it's my, when it's Penwell's time, I can, I'll be the guy in your corner. I'll make sure you are flourishing because, you know, my heart is just open to other people also winning. So, um, Back to back to the question you asked. It is difficult. Um, where are you going to raise at least 100K, 200K, 300K to buy decent diamonds to start cutting, polishing, to start marketing, and then to start selling? Um, you, you have guys. You know, if you're not in certain circles, your polished stuff isn't going to fetch a premium price. Forget it. Yeah. You know, so uh, they're going to start discounting you less 35%, less 40, less 45, less 50. Other guys will be brutal. They'll go down less 70%. And so guys have really, in a sense, paid their school fees um, and learned that, you know, what, it's, it's not as rosy as it seems. If you don't know the right people, um, you, you're not going to make it, unfortunately. But I don't want to... I, and I had this 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 talk with an old Afrikaner top in my in in Kimberley. I think he's originally from Joburg, 30, 40 years in the industry, been cutting and polishing. And he said, "Listen, um, all these young guys I'm advising are trying to do the same things that Browns is doing, that Stearns is doing, that all the other SMMEs in the space are doing, which is what we are taught. It's it's to buy the largest possible clean diamond and then to cut out the largest possible clean diamond." to yield maximum profits. But I want to use my artistic side more than ever because I think the kind of school I went to had this uh, left brain bias where, you know, the arts were shunned. No, you must do science and maths and IT. And that sort of formed and, you know, it shaped a lot of my thinking going into tertiary. Whereas I've got this brilliant, untapped creative side and my wife is like, dude, why aren't you using this and monetizing this? And I said, no, I'm, I want to use diamonds to tell stories, to bring out black people's stories and to be able to monetize that in, in, in clever ways. But I think the whole thing about uh, that, that the beers used uh, decades ago, uh, it still has a market. It still has a kind of appeal, but I don't want to knock on those doors anymore. I want to do, I want to get more into novelties. And, 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 and see how uh, bringing black people closer to this commodity might get enough critical voices into the space to then change the industry um, from a macroeconomic level. Because I've tried, I've written to the president, to ministers, um, we've tried to, 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 to shift things. And there's white people who've even tried to make this industry um, open it up in a sense, you know, and, and make it speak to black realities more. But unfortunately, we don't have ministers that listen. We don't have a president that listens. And best believe if, if, if politicians don't want to actually resolve something or change something, know that they are benefiting from that chaos and their family mm -hmm. members are benefiting from that as well. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's my take on, on, on that side. Jeez, thanks a lot, PJ. Um, sure. You, you're speaking about getting black people into, trying to get as many black people as possible into this industry. Yeah. You spoke about going through black consciousness and those things in, in, in tertiary or, or when you're getting your skills. Please can you tell us more about that journey um, and how you, 
you ended up getting rid of that disease in 2017? Uh, it, it Look, you actually played a massive role in, in, in my mental sanity. And, and I mean this in the truest sense. Like I, I really got drowned out in, in, in that world of, of fighting all the time, of um, giving of myself. Look, I had no money left. I had no resources left. I really, my, my heart was, and soul was, was, was in there. And I, and, I, and I believed if there's one thing that I could achieve, let me at least give the next black person a chance to, to get into to higher education because that person inevitably is not only going to study uh, university. I mean, the word says it itself. It is um, universe and city put together. That makes university. So you bringing, <laughs> it's a city that brings the universe together. And there's so much more um, available to learn for people and to be exposed to. So I thought that this was some, worthy cause you know to throw uh, my weight behind but you come to realize that fees must fall has been done uh, roads must fall has been done it was never called that before but black students mm. have been fighting since the 90s you know um and another thing about about why fees must fall became so prominent is that there was definitely a a class bias because uh roads must fall came out of uct you should see the difference in in, in reporting and, and, and how protests would work. Once it starts at UCT, police and, and, and private security are very friendly. There were these organizations that had these bibs on and there were these independent observers, you know. Um, so police were like very cautious about how they went about things because Helen Zilla's child's there, uh, Brian Mulifi's son's there. You've got all these prominent people's children there. So um, there are a few people who can pull strings. But go to UWC, police would go and private security would go into rooms and shoot up students while they were showering, sure. you know. So that shows that uh, it, it, because it stemmed out of UCT, roads must fall, and then eventually it morphed into fees must fall, you then had a situation where it got the media attention, international attention, Harvard University paid yeah. attention, Oxford University, you understand. But I essentially said, and I, I believe, and due to my own spiritual journey, and because of where I dig for information, that my greatest contribution to this might actually be on the spiritual side of things. Um, mm -hmm. as, as much as I'm playing a business role, as much as I am looking for what would be my next role politically and that I'm playing this, this role behind the scenes because I shared the hell out of your videos immediately when I started encountering your information. I liked on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. I was, I was following and I was like, no, man, this guy's speaking my language because I was, I was the one who was like, guys, you can't even shoot a water gun, but you want to tell me about land and you want to tell me about annexing this and taking that. Let's get real. You unfit. You can't run around the block. You can't defend yourself. You can't defend your family. So because your crowd was growing, I thought, no, man, I was right. And even though my voice then started drowning out because I was raising these realities, the financial realities and said, guys, you can't be bashing liberals and uh, clever blacks but then at the same time when you've got a political program you need to beg for money from the same people when we need to bail out we, we have to ask for money from the same people we've been critiquing you understand okay. so I said no 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 um, the model needs to change and it was very painful for me because there were white people that were genuinely just good people to me they empowered me um, growing up and things like that. Now you have to, hey, now you have to say f everyone, and you have to block these people, and you have to antagonize all relationships. And I think a lot, a lot of it is actually quite a bit of showmanship, and a lot of people, when tasked to step up to the plate, would actually not stand and fall by their words, you know. But I saw that um, you are genuine in 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 what you are putting out, and so for me. Um, as, as, as a young black man, that then became a moment where I could say, okay, uh, this is then something I can practically throw my weight behind 
it's still going to elevate and help black people but it's going to do it out of a space where i can pour out of a full cup instead of this empty cup that it's 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 not really going to achieve a great deal i lost comrades uh, comrades of mine were shot and killed um sure. it's still yeah the uh, pilela gilwa was one of them uh, orasmo zaya was another and unfortunately these were black people that killed them from those communities who were trying to get land for and open opportunities up for i mean one of them was in kailicha i think it was uh, mandela park and then another in another community it was i think somerset we'd like drive at 9 10 at night we'd get a lawyer in the community we'd help people with evictions um i was in in kanini as well i was i was helping uh, students security guards uh, cleaners and uh, i'm tremendously grateful because the the minds that i was exposed to <laughs> those were the i think those are the most brilliant people we have in this country but you might never know about them because um some of them just do lack the discipline to do what you've done consistently to build your profile to build to build your networks and um they 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 write they on facebook i have a list of them um that i can tell you about and some people whose brains you could also pick um yeah. that in fact andile ntama was uh, crucial in shaping some of these people and then those people taught me so i wanted in your in your future interviews with 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 udj spu if you could maybe uh, let andile speak about uh, snl as well as spaces like blackwash because i think even simpua dana was part of or you know part of his his conscious spaces so yes SNL it is it is blackwash yes yes ask andile about oh. that because he then needs to fill the gap between when he leaves azapo and uh when he forms blf what what does he do in between then you need to then ask him that and that that i think will enrich the conversation even more no thank you very much brother um i i do believe that worrying about black people is is a mental illness because it drains you financially it drains your energy it drains yeah. your time and as you've said about your comrades you you end up losing your life for some people you know yeah. which is quite tragic I'm yeah. fascinated that you said speaking about yourself as a young black man. Are are mm-hmm. you not colored? Why why would you say you're a young black man? <laughs> um my dad is a black man. He's 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 a he's a Tswana man. Um his surname is Tebe Apelo. I don't carry my dad's surname. Um but to go even deeper into that history which is something I'm researching is that there are Zulu roots um and that there's this segment of Tswana people that actually mm-hmm. have um a uh, very strong Zulu ancestry that moved up to the northern cape to the northwest side um and it's 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 quite a big talking point in my family in fact i was crucial in connecting a lot of them even though they didn't raise me but i would drive to kuruman i drive to all these places meet uncles aunts i think my my dad has about 15 siblings um i met one year in pretoria i went dr- drove out to pretoria one day um he hasn't been to kimberley since the 1980s so i was the first one to see him in the family since like the 80s um Jeez. my mom my mom's side is where there is more of a mixed race element that comes in but sure. my mother is also tswana speaking very fair woman um but we there's this obviously this weird blend where you grow up christian but you still have these african practices that you do um i'm still annoyed that my mother didn't speak sitswana with us in the home we were raised speaking afrikaans you understand so sure. i've had to go back and start learning uh my languages but i've got some white ancestry in there as well people who came from scotland that's great 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 grandfathers um who who settled in the northern cape region i've also got some there's an indian lady i i know you've also got that blood in you uh <laughs> which is why sometimes i'm mistaken some people think i'm indian uh if i go into certain parts they think i'm indian um and and i get on really well with indian people for some or other reason so um but yes also predominantly tswana blood on my mother's side again you know so uh 
the surname Huyeman has actually changed in apartheid from Huememang. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know where along the line, but I, I know it happened with my grandfather. And then oh. it was changed to, to Huyeman. And since then, uh, that has been the, the surname that we've continued with. I still do recognize Huyememang. Um, she's, I, I, I know all the surnames going back. You know, there's Korope, oh. there's Parasi, there's, um, there's the low family. That's my maternal grandmother's side. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, I've, I've really done this research back to 1867. At least I know my mother's 1867. history. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's quite impressive. And I'm, I'm quite inspired because I've spoken before the importance of building a family tree, you know, um, sure. I think especially as black people, our dignity has been crushed and, and destroyed in so many ways. And yeah. one of the ways to reclaim your dignity is if you can, learning some of your indigenous languages, if you don't know them. Mm. Uh, yeah. If you can, finding out where your father is from, finding out where your mother is from, um, whether that history is good or not. I mean, there could have been rape somewhere, there could have been adoption, there could have been stepfathers and stepmothers, because there's a lot of scandals historically. But it just yeah. gives you some type of confidence when you go out into the world to say, this is who yeah. I am, good or bad, this is yeah. where I come from. And this is my lineage sure. and my history. So thank you very much sure. for that. You decided you. to get married. You found a woman who yeah. is enterprising like you and you guys decided to build a business. How did your business come yeah. about? And, and why of all things, uh, lactating biscuits? Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Press more um, biscuits. <laughs> Look, um, I, yeah, so this is, I like what you are doing. You, you, you are sometimes very harsh, which is, which is needed, which is good. I'm also very harsh at times in trying to bring information across. I know you are not a proponent of Insaulo, Ilobolo and all those things. <laughs> and I, I think you, no, you raise very cogent arguments and culture is not a stagnant phenomenon, which is right. You must make black people think about every aspect of their lives Wherever they've fallen asleep at the wheel, we need to think. And, and you causing us to think on our feet. I have paid the uh, <laughs> bola and so on. Of course, I look, I, I, I do agree with a lot of what you have said. And how I'm going to raise my son, Ahisang, is to, 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 maybe, to maybe switch this up, you know, in, in the way that uh, things, things will be done. Sure. We're not happy with the way. Um, you know, her family has sort of uh, treated, uh, uh, um, I mean, there's a percentage that must go to the young couple to further their lives and so on and so forth. But I don't want to delve too deep into that. But let, let me go sure. into the business. Uh, so my wife gave birth last year on the 15th of Feb to our son. So, uh, congrats, and then, congrats to the both of you. Sure. Thank you. I do also have aspirations of having about 10 children. Um, Here we go. You know, it, it's, I don't know if it's now in my blood as well, but um, there's just a part of me that really wants to, to also go that route. And um, basically, my wife had a bit of a struggle with her breast milk pr- uh, production herself. And a few times she wanted to bail out and, you know, use formula. Sure. Sorry, PJ, I lost you there for like a minute. The, the last oh. bit I caught was sorry, you sorry. Uh, basically saying that, that your wife uh, was struggling to generate breast milk and she almost wanted to bail out and go to formula. 
Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm a proponent of, like you saying, getting sunshine, working out, um, which I've been slacking on. Um, and, you know, eating natural food, cutting meat out at, uh, you know, periodic times, eating less meat, more greens and things like that. Um, so sure. I, I'm also very, uh, I've got a lot of herbal knowledge because my mother is a professional nurse. Uh, she's the one who raised me. But uh, I think about 2003, around about then, I was still in primary school. She was like, no, we're switching up. No more white sugar, only brown sugar. And... Um, the other thing with black people as well is some of these spiritual gifts that I believe people do have, um, you know, they find themselves in occupations that are an approximation of that. And so um, there's this, I realize through other people now, this vast body of medicinal knowledge that I have, you know, something I pop in the pot and boil or I'll go by and go there. And so I, I took it for granted because it's, it's pretty much normal to me. But other people are so amazed by that. I didn't go through initiation school or anything like that. But that's, that's just, you know, our life. And so my mom said, no, she, she egged my wife on. I also egged her on. And then she did research like mad, you know. There are other things that help certain women. Other women say peanuts have helped them. Um, Coffee helped my wife, but at times it, it didn't, you know. So she did all the research, um, credit to her, and then she found out that, okay, um, there's a thing called lactation cookies, and then um, we, there were issues. I think there's a seller somewhere in South Africa, but they're not taking um, bigger strides to market. They not, um, there's, there were safety and hygiene issues um, with stale cookies and things like that. So... I then said to her, look, let's monetize this thing because she's been baking anyway. She was doing muffins, she was doing cakes and stuff like that. I said, no, pivot out of that because everyone's in that space. Let's go into this niche. And I think this is sort of a first to market race in a sense. Um, and I was like, hey, you know, I believe in what Pendle says, business is warfare. Let's make moolah out of that. So um, since November 2021, I think within a month and a half, we covered all nine provinces uh, in terms of delivering to clients. We just checked our statements now. We In these six months, um, in deposits, uh, we've gotten about 86,000, you know. In, Jesus, in, in, that's in crazy. Months. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats to you and your yeah. wife, dog. Like, on the Thanks, real. Bro. Selling Thanks, like yes, taking cookies. Yep. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, so, the so, so the plan now is just to tick off the other compliance boxes. The, uh, we're finishing up now with some micro testing, a nutritionist, and uh, we want to get, uh, we might be partnering with some uh, Madalas who've got a factory um, and then moving our operations there so that we're able to properly scale because we're going to be aggressive marketing now. We, we're still considering uh, the likes of this game and clicks. Um, we're closing ourselves off to working with other uh, black retailers. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about that space. Um, and also I was doing a bit of digging into Tiger Brands and maybe waking up the two and seeing, uh, you know, which one should we gun for, you know? Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's basically the next phase. That's where we are now. I'd just like to once again say congrats to you and your wife. Um, I don't sure. think we hear enough stories in particular, especially of young black couples that have a similar vision, that are willing to put in the work. Um, yeah, and I'm excited about what the two of you are going to achieve, not just with this sure. business, but just this business will become just one of your projects that became a success and the other Definitely. projects that are still going to come. Um, I hope in time you guys can get on platforms specifically as a couple um, yeah. because it's nice to hear a man speak about his business success. It's nice to hear a woman speak about her business success. We don't get enough couples speaking about their combined success. So get on platforms and speak about your success. Speak about how you're balancing that with your marriage, balancing that with being parents. Um, sure. And hopefully inspire and mentor other couples as well. Um, I think what's going to be important for us, and I'm not sure if you're going to post this in the comments when I upload this video, 
uh, how sure. people can get in touch with you. Um, sure. If people maybe want to invest, if people maybe want to help with distribution where they're based, because distribution in retail is everything. And then Definitely. obviously after distribution, if you can begin, I don't know if it's going to make sense to have mini factories around or if it's going to be better to have one big factory and then to distribute. But you'll, you, you guys probably will have that knowledge. But I think a lot of people are, are going to want to get involved. And yeah. it's not just about selling these cookies. It's mm -hmm. very much about a knowledge on the female body, which was actually mm -hmm. built to feed and understanding yeah. that don't just give up and go to formula. Your body was designed for these things and there are natural ways to resolve some of these issues so that baby can get mom's breast milk that was designed for baby to be as strong and as powerful as possible. So um, I think from my side, just uh, two more questions being number one, uh, what's in the cookies? And then number two, uh, we're going to have to do a follow-up video of this, but in the follow-up video, what would you like to talk about? That's my second question and my closing question. But the first one sure. is, what's in the cookies? What what products are in the cookies? Okay, so basically we've got uh, our flavor range uh, for now is as follows. Um, I'll start there and then go into the ingredients. So we've got white chocolate chips. We've got uh, dark chocolate chips. We've got caramel chips. We've also got um, cranberries and pecans, uh, raisins and almonds. And then um, what's the other one again? I um, must just remember. Oh, yes, we've got like dates and coconut and then prunes and coconut as well. So uh, and just a point on that, I think um, some of those very nutritious uh, stuff don't always filter down to people who cut like it's, it's sometimes very expensive to buy nuts and things like that. So sure. the, the, the price point also considers to say, well, how can the ordinary working class women maybe get really nutritious uh, snacks on the go, you know, um, and integrate this into their diet so that we have more of these health conversations. Um, we've got, we've got some oats in our cookies. Um, we've, we've, we've obviously got the, the basic um, ingredients like, you know, flour and egg and things like that. But the galactagogues are things like brewer's yeast. Um, they are flaxseed powder. They are flax seeds themselves. Um, uh, what else is there? Um, oh, yeah, the oats are actually in combination also sort of act like a, a galactagogue. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very simple and a little bit of water as well. So it takes about 12 minutes to bake. Um, per batch and sure. yeah it's, it's it's made with love and sometimes I'm up till 2am 3am in the morning we have to wake up next day you have to do the weighbills the bubble wrapping the delivering but it's fun I love it I'm I mean I think entrepreneurship is it really shouldn't be sold for everyone because you should really yeah. find your strength but this I mean I see myself as like um uh, in my mind's eye, I see myself as like a special forces operative. It's that thing where you say, <laughs> able to be put in Egypt and I must come out there and I must be able to thrive, you know, have a foreigner mindset I where think. you are. Yeah, don't don't relax because you're South African. Like, uh, think of yourself as a Zimbabwean or a Malawian and whatever, or as a refugee, you know, uh, and then build yourself up from that. And And, and I think I've gotten rid of any last bit of entitlement that I've had. Um, and, I've, and I've really, I've really groomed myself. I've really cut out certain things and people that no longer serve me. And I'm just excited, man, for, for the, the critical black voices that are coming out and reaching people. Uh, if yeah. anything, I'd like to see how election results look if Wi-Fi reaches these remote villages and mm. our townships because we often like if you look at if you look at um twitter and facebook like hey you'd think sometimes you think eff is one day elections you know but yeah. that's not reality as you said it could be 30 40 000 people having a viewpoint but there's millions of other people so you've really got got to get into society so a thing like a virtual mkuku you know by black people us using our pain and uh, 
making and sculpting something even more beautiful and great out of that. Uh, that's the kind of wherewithal that we need to change our situation around. And it, it will be a lot of suspending of emotions. We are an emotional race. We shouldn't lie about it. We are boisterous people. We talk a turf, we loud, we sing, we dance. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But with that, uh, you need to channel it. And I don't know if you want to go into some of, some of the spiritual topics next time, but I'd like to maybe unpack things like, for instance, there's a guy called Master Yao. So I learned about Master Yao through a guy called Rom Wills in America. And Rom Wills and guys like Coach Red Pearl and yourself were also important in uh, me becoming more of a man and even a better man than I was before. So I'd listen to hours and hours of you guys while I was doing work, you know, put the earphones in and while I would, I would consume, consume and apply these things, you know. So Master Yao goes into one of the spiritual aspects of, of the races, you know, um, sort of these archetypes that define us and, 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 and in how we were made. And so he goes into black people bearing the water element, each race having its, its element. And how water is one of the elements that needs the strictest, uh, you know, regimes of, of discipline. Because, um, I mean, look, look, look at water that we need to drink every day. It needs very strong systems of control. It needs to, to look what it's done in KZN. You understand? Sure. Uh, whereas a fire could be contained far more easily than that. So... Sure. I'm, 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 I'm excited that you guys are bringing, even if this is a virtual matchbox for now, maybe it can become something <laughs> big. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm just so honored. And I believe, Penwell, the things that you're doing for other people, um, I really hope they, they come back to you a hundredfold, a millionfold, because you, you are doing amazing things. Um, you've been on TV, you've acted before, um, you, you've got a degree, you've been in corporate, you could have decided, ah, fuck, let me just, uh, you know, uh, bust my balls in corporate and let me go buy a house in Santon and I don't have to worry about these people. And sometimes we do get those feelings and we try and help our people. We do come become despondent. We need to be honest about that. But when I can, when I, after a long day or while I bake, in fact, my wife knows while I bake, I've got these uh, earphones that I put in Penuel, what's the next video? The next video, like, share, like, share, like, share, like, share, and and so it continues. And I gain a lot of strength from you. Um, you are doing amazing work, and yes, I definitely want to meet up with you, brother, because um, yeah, there's there's a lot I believe that we can achieve together, and that I can learn from you, and that I have already learned from you. And I think is it Musa Muswangani. I also share his stuff religiously um, because you guys. You guys are making the topics around SMMEs and business and ordinary topics. You're making it real. You're making it relatable. You know, you're talking to the guy that has to deposit 50 rand or 100 rand in his business bank account, you know, to keep his business afloat. So I was, I used to be at that stage. And those are the kind of conversa conversations we need to have. Not highfalutin conversations in yeah. hotels all the time that people... Uh, struggle to get transport for, but bringing it to them and making it relatable to them and breaking concepts down for them. I remember in one of your groups, you were saying, um, I was using this bombastic English. And when I look at the style of your videos, um, you, you, you really break things down into minute concepts. And it's not to undermine the intelligence of your crowd but it's to make it really understandable to the ordinary person out there. So I'm very excited. I'm very enthused. And um, if I can just say one, th one thing quickly, um, I actually wanted to leave, to, 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 to leave with a quote and then a book recommendation sure. or two book recommendations. So one of them is that it's by George Bernard Shaw. I think I saw this last night. The quote is that all great truths, begin as blasphemies. <laughs> I think that's something yeah. that, that's, that, that's something powerful that, that, that I want to leave in this life. And then a book that I'll recommend for you, if you've not read it before, and some of your, your followers and listeners and penualists, um, is 
The Theory and Practice of Black Jeez, I lost PJ. I need to get him back so he can finish. I don't even know if I'm having network issues, but anyways, I hope PJ will send a request soon. I want him to finish off because I never got the name of the book he was saying. He was saying the theory of black something. Um, I struggle with compliments myself, so... When I get complimented, I just don't know what to say, but I'm, I'm honored and I'm happy to be finding people that are of my tribe, people like PJ, people that are of similar mind. We want to work, we want to add value, we want to build, and we understand the various dimensions of the wars that we're in in this life, and we're trying to get freedom at the ultimate level. Let me just see. Okay, he's back. Sorry, PJ, was that me again? No, no, that was me. Sorry, my daughter ran out oh. there, so I had to, yeah, <laughs> switch to Wi-Fi. Okay. My apologies. <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to say before you carry on, um, I struggle with compliments, uh, but, sure. but thank you very much, and I'm humbled, and more than anything, I'm just happy to be finding my tribe. I think we're sure. finding each other, um, and yeah. we're going to keep finding more of each other, and it's going sure. to be important that we work together. Um, sure. We can praise each other and compliment each other, but I think we all probably are of same, same mind, same knowledge mm -hmm. base, and same outlook. So I look forward to meeting yourself and your wife, um, hopefully sure. introducing you to the rest of the clan that I've kind of built here in Joburg. Um, Definitely. After you give your book recommendation, uh, yeah. please can you also give contact details or the easiest ways that people can contact you? Is it DM here via... Social media is there another way, and then I think we can shut this down. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So, uh, by the way, and when we come, we will all be wearing black. You know, just come to, on. <laughs> come on. Just to just to honor uh, God Penuel Day. Um, <laughs> so the thing is, um, yes, this book. Uh, it actually, if you really, really want to understand uh, the ANC, I I don't really find a lot of information that. Um, fleshes out, you know, uh, this this mammoth organization. But not only the ANC, it goes into the formation of the PAC and many of the black consciousness movements. So it goes into the, the, the I think it does go into the struggle of Amat Kaba and Amat Koboka, um, the, the, the westernized and the more, more cultural, but even into publications from the 1800s, there were black, there was a black newspaper in the 1800s. I think BLF um, is their paper or their circular is called uh, uh, the Black Opinion or something like that. But it was wow. a Tosa uh, uh, a publication, and these 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 guys i think then struggled with funding and then they were funded by the some of the british in the the cape colony um and then people felt that uh, part of the radical side of it was then sort of lost and sell outism this thing of selling out dates way 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 back and this capturing discourse really goes way back so the guy really uh, writes this book very, it's very succinct. It's to the point, but it gives you very valuable points about the, the colored in the, the colored Congress, the Indian Congress, how these came together. And, um, I believe if, if, if anything, a complete man in my, in my view must understand politics and how it works, must understand economics, the game of finances. And mm. you could then pair the personal development part. Uh, gymming, fitness, and so on with, um, if he wants to, um, a solid spiritual foundation. I believe that's 
that's that's for everyone to choose for themselves. I don't really prescribe things. I only share uh, from my from my from my experience and so on and so forth. So lastly, you the guys can book. contact. Oh, the name of so, the book. I'll I'll I'm also really leave it in the, the comments. Sure. I'll also leave it in the comments. It's called the theory and practice of black resistance to apartheid. Uh, it is a social ethical analysis by Mukheti Mutabi. At the end, he goes into a bit of a, a moralistic sort of tralala that I don't really like, but that's a very short <laughs> part of the book. But most of the book is 90, 95% very solid book that I'd recommend for people to get. The other book, uh, but maybe I can talk about this at a later stage, is The Zodiac and the Salts of Salvation by George W. Carey. So I've actually started a, applying the knowledge in that book. Um, basically, it breaks down that we all obviously uh, born on different days and months. According to that, you might uh, have a propensity for certain illnesses and lack certain uh, minerals in your body. Because the universe, the cosmos is just a, ref a reflection of you you know, on a macro scale, you are a micro version of the universe. So I've started mm. actually applying that. Um, uh, I'm Leo. So I got my cell salts for my Zodiac. It has definitely made a difference in my life. I'm not even trying to bullshit you guys, but we'll talk about that some other time. And uh, if you guys want to contact me, just uh, inbox me on, 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 on this uh, profile of mine uh, on Instagram or you can send me a WhatsApp or call me on 072-673-2205. Um, yeah, I'm always responsive and, and, and active because for now I'm doing some of the socials for the company. So I'm like on TikTok, LinkedIn, and I'm everywhere, you know. Uh, so from here on in, we can link further and yes, build, build this Mkuku into a mansion. <laughs> and you'll, and you'll, add, uh, you'll add those contact details in the comments as well. Yes, definitely. PJ, thank you very much, brother. And I look forward to having the next catch up. I don't know when it will be, but we'll chat via text. And then hopefully sure. we can speak about the spiritual stuff. And then you can speak about the book that you spoke about, the Zodiac. Sure, 100%. Thanks a lot, brother. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for the platform. You two have an awesome one, guys. Cheers, eh? <laughs> Let me see if I can just read some of your comments before I, I, fin I close this video. Jeez. Jeez. Rangapi, hello from Namibia. I see the wife, Kineilwe Khoyaman, sent comments as well. Uh, Animal Shapiro, I hope I said that correctly, saying Danko. I saw there were a couple of comments coming in um, from that person. Uh, Mutaun Kane, what's the name of the book? The book will be written in the comments as well. Uh, Donovan, the Donovan Yards, we hear you clearly. Uh, I see Watson S. Fitness as well. Um, Pablo Nake, pen you well, the black pen. That's me, bro. Um, Kinelio says, I always listen in when you play panels videos. Thank you so much. I look forward to meeting the both of you and getting involved in your business, of course. Uh, Sakile Siwela, lovely. Next time I'll be on this platform. Definitely, we can make that happen. Mpo Makali, name of the two books again. Uh, Peter John will post them in the comments. Uh, I think I'll stop there. Guys, have a great day. Remember to work hard. Remember to take care of your bodies. Remember that you can lead. And one of the coolest things that I think PJ said in the video was that you are a, a micro version of the universe. Your body and your mind are a mini universe. So take care of yourself. Have a great day, guys. Cheers.